well, and I hope you enjoyed the um, videos by Mr. Kirby. Um, I'm back now, um, and we're going to continue with um, the uh, rational functions. And interestingly enough, I didn't change the dates on this. Look at this was 11 years ago. And yes, I was Martinelli then. I was Martinelli before I became Schwartzman, a.k.a. Sichua. So I went from Charmar to Sichua. So anyway, um, we're going to be looking for Vaz, Haz, and then we're going to talk about, well, we'll talk about Saz on the next one. Um, holes, 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 and then intercepts, X and Y intercepts, if there are any. Okay. So let's take a look at this guy. And then I hope that you realize upstairs is where you're going to have your, um, in your numerator is going to be your X intercepts and your VAS, your vertical asymptotes are going to be in your denominators. If you have no common factors, I'm going to talk about what that means um, in a minute, okay? No common factors in the numerator or denominator, okay? So right now, I'm taking a look at this right over here. And if you remember, the ha is the ratio of the um, highest degree. And in this case, the highest degree upstairs and downstairs is x to the first. So your ha is going to be y is equal to 3 halves. So if I want to find out what my ha is, my va is, my vertical asymptote, I take the denominator and I set it equal to zero. So my vertical asymptote is going to be um, x is equal to 5 halves. So now over here, 5 halves is like 2.5. So 2.5 is going to be literally in between. God forgive me, but this is where it is. So this is um, x is equal to 3 halves. My horizontal asymptote is at 3 halves. So that's going to be... I really should have probably broken this down into three big problems, but, you know, three different pages, but lazy me. Um, anyway, so this is, and it's always smart to label your vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So we have X is equal to five halves. Now, if you want to see, like, again, I remember, I'm sure he talked about end behavior. Like, is it going to be, you know, going like that, going like that up here or down here and so forth. Um, but the other thing we could do is we should also find the X and Y intercepts. So that was what we were told to find the X and Y intercepts. So if I want to find the X intercept, I'm going to take the numerator and set it equal to zero. So my X intercept is going to be three X plus four equals zero. So X is going to be equal to negative four thirds. So over here, negative four thirds is negative one and one third. So it's somewhere right in there. So right about there is where my, um, let me use pink because it's pretty. Um, it's going to be right about there. And then my Y intercept is when X is equal to zero. So um, three times zero plus four over two times zero minus five. So my Y intercept is going to be three X plus four. I'm sorry, three times zero plus four and then two times zero minus five, which is equal to negative four fifths. And negative four fifths is uh, just a little bit less than one. So it's going to be right over here. And it's going to look like this. Now, because, and I think Kevin might have, Kevin, Mr. Kirk, we probably talked to you about when you have um, a denominator that is to the first power, that it's probably, that it's odd. So if, if your um, curve is down here, it should be up top over here. And that's all well and good. And if it's squared, they're going to be either both are going to be above or they're both going to be below the horizontal asymptote. But to confirm it, let's be smart about our confirmation. So if let's say I wanted to hypothetically pick, I don't know, like four. If I plugged four in here, I would have three times four plus four over two times four minus five. And three times four is 12, and that would be 16 over three and 16 thirds is greater than three halves. Like in other words, use your number sense, like really think about these things, like pick numbers to the left and to the right of the um, um, vertical asymptote and it'll give you a hint as to um, what's going on. And I want to point out a couple of things too. Around the five halves mark is, um, is an issue. Like in other words, if we were to look at our domain and range, right? So I didn't even ask you to do that, but I'm going to ask you to do it now and actually to find the domain and range for all of them. If you look at your domain, your domain is going to be everything except five halves. So X is going to be all real numbers, but X cannot equal five halves. 
and your range, again, everybody's trying to approach three halves, but it never gets there. So your range is going to be all real numbers, but y cannot equal three halves. So when you're doing this, I want you to keep in mind these kinds of things that we're talking about. Now, if you take numbers, and if you notice, the closer that you try to get to um, five halves, right? So that's 2.5. So if you had like 2.5, five zero 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 one and you plugged it into this ratio that number is going to shoot straight up if you put a hundred into this ratio that number is going to approach three halves and I challenge you right now to hit pause on this video and test out some numbers to prove what I'm talking about because to me one of the most important things is to actually really make sense of what these numbers are saying so it's saying that you know for example if I were to use two point four nine 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 and I were to plug it into this equation, that number is going to be a really, really, really negative number. So, and again, I challenge you, I challenge you, I dare you, I triple dog dare you to stop and test out numbers to say, hey, you know what? If I plug in negative 1,000 into this ratio, boy, it's going to get really, really close to three halves. Okay? All right. So let's move on to the next one. I think I'm going to go to a new page. Okay? So... If I recall, it's y is equal to negative 3 over, I can't believe I can't remember what it is, but that's why we get to go back, 3x minus 5 quantity squared. Okay, so this is going to be 3x minus 5 quantity squared. I couldn't make this easy, right? Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of things here. Again, we're looking for vertical asymptotes. We're looking for horizontal asymptotes. We're looking for x-intercepts. We're looking for y-intercepts. We're looking for all kinds of things, if, of course, they exist. So first things first is we always, you know, I always take a look at a habit. I always look at my vertical asymptote by looking at my denominator. And, you know, I'm looking at my numerator, and the only number that's in there is negative 3. There's no x's. There's no anything like that. But I'm looking down here, and this is basically telling me that my vertical asymptote is going to be 5 thirds, okay? My horizontal asymptote is, you know, there's no x up here, but there's an x down here. So that means then that this guy is going to grow way faster than that guy. So that means that this horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals 0. The reason why it's going to be y equals 0 is because if you go back to this over here, the reason why we know that our horizontal asymptote is equal to 3 halves is because if we plug in giant numbers in here for x, the ratio is approaching 3 halves, whether you're going in the positive direction or if you're going in the negative direction. So again, I submit to you because it's all about what is y doing, right? What are the limitations on y? That's what the horizontal asymptote is talking about. So when you're putting in giant numbers into this ratio and actually do it on your calculators and make sure you use parentheses when you go ahead and plug it in down here because I know you guys are so darn toot and careless, okay? So just do that, and you'll see that that's going to happen. And if you go ahead and you use your heads and say, okay, so we're seeing what happens like as x gets bigger and bigger in this ratio, what is the y doing? That's what a horizontal asymptote is. Let me say that again. As x gets bigger and bigger in this ratio, what is y doing? That y that I'm talking about is the horizontal asymptote. So let's use our heads. If I have negative 3 divided by a giant number, right, negative 3 divided by a billion, it's going to go to 0. So I know my horizontal asymptote is going to be 0, okay? If I look at my x-intercepts, my x-intercept is when my numerator is equal to 0. When is my numerator going to be equal to 0? That's right, never. So there is no, none. We don't have one, okay? And then our y-intercept is when this is going to be equal to 0. When is this ratio, or y, I'm sorry, no it's not, it's when x is equal to 0, oh my goodness, Charlene. So we're going to do um, y of 0, because you can do that, it's like f of x, you could do y of x, is negative 3 divided by 3 times 0 minus 5 quantity squared. So 3 times 0 is 0, and then negative 5 squared is 25, so this is negative 3 25ths. So my y-intercept is 0 comma negative 3 25ths. So now when I go to graph this thing, and I'm going to change the colors because I can, okay, um, I know I have, it, so that's um, 1 and 2 thirds, right? So that's going to be 1 and 2 thirds, so we'll call this 1 and we'll call this 2 over here, so 1 and 2 thirds, right? So that's x is equal to 1 and 2 thirds. My y-intercept, I'm sorry, not my y-intercept, my y horizontal asymptote is y is equal to 0. Okay, 
Um, there are no x-intercepts, and it makes sense because your horizontal asymptote is zero. Um, and then your y-intercept is going to be over here at zero comma negative three twenty fifths, so negative three comma twenty fifths. Okay. Yeah. So we know this part of the you know of the graph is going to be going this way, right? Because it's got to pass through here, and it's confined to those boundary lines, right? But then the important thing is, is because this is squared, it's going to look the same exact way on this side. But let's think about why that's true. Okay. No matter what I plug in here, right? So the 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 symmetry line, if you will, is one and two thirds. So if I were to plug in you know, six, three times two is six minus five is one. And if I square it, so no matter what happens here, right? No matter if I square a number, I'm doing negative three divided by that. So upstairs is always negative. Downstairs is always going to be positive, which means that ratio is always going to be negative. So that's another way to look at it. But because we have this beautiful squared here, that's telling us that around this um, vertical asymptote, you're going to have this beautiful, beautiful symmetry. And again, um, just keep looking at these values and saying to yourself, does everything make sense? Okay. Now, this one over here is super, uber duper interesting because the, excuse me, the degree upstairs is greater than the degree downstairs. And I'm going to go ahead and see if I can remember what that is on the next two pages. So I have, I thought I said y is equal to x squared plus 4x plus 5. Did I see that correctly? Divided by, let me go back, confirm this minus five and then x minus one okay x minus one and then this is really where'd it go i can't okay we'll start over so i remember that it was x squared my uh, plus four x minus five over x minus one well this might work out well okay <laughs> So if I wanted to see if I could factor the numerator, anytime you see a quadratic, your instinct should be like, can I factor that? And I think you can, actually. So if I look at this, I can factor this to be x minus 1 times x plus 5. And that's going to be over x minus 1. Well, I want to alert you. Common factors, oh, is a good thing. Common factors, because right now when you're looking at, at staring at this, how many of you thought, <laughs> how many of you thought that you had a vertical asymptote at one? Well, for those of you who thought you had a vertical asymptote at one, you don't. And the reason why you don't is because you have a common factor upstairs and downstairs. And when you have a common factor, that simply means, okay, common factor is equal to a hole in the graph or a little jump, okay? It's not like asymptotic. It's almost like it's something like this and then it jumps and then it continues on. And they like to designate it by showing that there's a hole there, but that's literally what it happens. It's like you're, you're like, oh, stop, you hop over and you just kind of move along. So a common, so that is literally what a hole looks like is that there's an actual, like a space in the graph. Like you're moving along and you're like, up, oh, and you just kind of go about your way. And then they like to designate it by a symbol using a hole there, okay? So right now, our graph is telling us that we have a common factor. So when we have a common factor, there's a hole there. So right now, we know that we have a hole at x equals 1. So when we cancel out those factors, we wind up with y is equal to x plus 5. Question. Are there any vertical or horizontal asymptotes? I hope you're all like, no. It's actually just a line whose slope is 1 and y-intercept is 5. So what it turns out is, is that thing turns out to be a line with a hole in it. So this rational function turns out to be a line with a hole. And if you recall, when we talked about rational functions a long time ago, I said it was a polynomial divided by a polynomial. Isn't that cool? So um, it's a poly divided by a poly. So if you go to graph this, so we have a hole. When I look over here at... Um, at this graph, this is telling me that I'm over here at five, right? Five and my slope is one, so over here. So I have a line, except over here at one, it doesn't exist. So in other words, this is basically saying that at the, 
whole is actually at 1 comma 6. Because if you plug 1 back in here, it's telling you where it's not defined. Now, I want to talk about this for a second, right? So it's like, again, it, it came along here, it hopped over. So if I were to just graph it, it would look just like this. So where there's a discontinu there's a discontinuity, like it's not going to, I had to pick my pen up to jump over that little spot right there. So if I said to you guys, looking at this particular example, what's the domain? What's the domain? What's the range? What's the domain and what's the range? To me, I'm looking at the domain, it's everything but one, because one is not in the domain. So it's all reals where x cannot equal 1, and your range is all reals, but y can equal, you got it, it can equal 6. So um, in going back, like over here, if I said to you guys, what's the domain for this guy, the domain should be all reals except that vertical asymptote. The difference is, is that the discontinuity occurs here at an asymptote, whereas the discontinuity over here is at a point. Isn't that cool? but they're both considered discontinuities, okay? This is called a non-removable discontinuity. This is a non-removable because there's, you know, there's an asymptote. You have like that big, big crack in the graph, big crack. So whereas this one over here is just a hole, it's like a doop. So this guy is called a removable discontinuity. Okay, we're going to do one more thing. Look at this, look at all this stuff that I have. We're going to do one more thing, and then we're going to call it a day. So let's say that we have, like, y is equal to um, x squared minus, let's say, 3x plus 40 divided by x squared minus 25. Okay? All right. So first things first, I hope you're all screaming to yourself, let's see if we can factor this, right? So if I factor the numerator, if you want to hit pause and factor it yourselves, let's do it. And then let's see what we got. Okay. So if I go and factor this, I'm feeling X. Hold on. I should make this minus 40. Uh-oh. Make it minus 40. Make it minus 40 or it's not going to work. Um, minus 40. So that's going to be X minus 8 times X plus 5. And then this is going to be X plus 5 times X minus 5 because it's a difference of two squares. Now I want you to make some observations. I want you to make some observations. You see something there? Do you see it? 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 Yeah, me too. So we have a common factor, right? And your common factor is x plus 5, right? And so x plus 5 is your common factor. Common factor tells you what? Do, 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 do. There is a hole there. Yep, hole at x equals negative 5. Once you've established that you know that, then you can cross those off. So if you're like, I've got a hole at x equals negative 5. So now we're going to move on and we're going to say, okay, we are now left with x minus 8 over x minus 5. So now, right now, let's not forget that there's a hole there. We'll come back to that. Let's take a look at this. Again, we got to look at our vertical asymptote. We got to look at our horizontal asymptote. We got to see if we have any x intercepts. We got to see if we have a y intercept and go through all that jazz. So just by looking at this, I hope you knuckleheads are like, ah, vertical asymptote is at x equals 5. My horizontal asymptote, if you notice, both are growing at the same rate. So this is x over x. So my horizontal asymptote is y equals 1. And by the way, highest degree is the same, and both of these coefficients are the same. So that's why it's still going to be 1. My x-intercept, if you recall, is when um, my numerator can be equal to 0. So that's going to be at 8. So we're at 8 comma 0 for my x-intercept. And then my y-intercept is when x equals 0. So if I put 0 in here and 0 in there, I get negative 8 over negative 5, and I get positive 8 fifths. So I get 0 comma 8 fifths. So I have this funky-looking graph, and let's go see what this sucker looks like, okay? So let's go graph that va. So we're going to call this guy x equals 5, y equals 1. Right, we got our little y equals 1. All right. Um, and let's see, we have an x-intercept at 8 comma 0, so we know we're over here at um, 8 comma 0. We have a y-intercept at 0 comma 8 fifths. Now, 8 fifths is 1 and 3 fifths, so it's 1.6. So it's actually going to be above your horizontal asymptote here, so this is 0 comma 8 fifths. Now, I want to go back to the hole. We have the x-coordinate of the hole, but now we have to find the y-coordinate of the hole. So we're going to go back to the 
simplified version um, of this rational function. And if I plug negative 5 in, I get negative 5 minus 8 over negative 5 minus 5. So I get negative 13 over negative 10, which is 13 tenths, which is 1.3, right? It is 1.3, as I hope so. God, I'm a hot mess. Okay, so our hole is actually located at 0 comma 1.3. So when I go to graph this, I'm going to go use a different color, that beautiful pink. I'm going to come along here. And we know it's going to look like this because it has to pass through that y-intercept, right? And we know it's going to be going like this because it's trying to pass through that x-intercept. Um, now, we have to go back over here, get our little marker here, and go ahead and just say that this point right here is your negative 5. And then put your little hole in there to say that it's negative 5 comma 1.3. And this is what this beautiful graph looks like. Now, I want to talk about the domain and range before I say goodbye and send you guys on your way to do some of these beautiful problems. And your domain, I want you to look at it. And what I want you to do is I actually want you to hit pause, okay, and then come back to me. Because I want you to see if you can figure out what it is. Okay. If you're back, I hope you said it can equal plus or minus 5, right? It can equal plus or minus 5. And your range is everything but, that's y can equal 1. But let's talk about the different types of discontinuities. Like, right, I had to pick, like, when, a discon dis when something's discontinuous, it means I have to pick my pen up when I'm drawing something, right? So I had to pick my pen up right over here because technically if I graph this, it's like this. It's a little jump and then it goes about its way, right? So this, if you remember, can you tell me what type of discontinuity this is versus this guy right over here? So you should be able to say that x equals negative 5 is a, you guessed it, this is your removable. And this at x equals positive 5 is your non-removable, right? The removable is like a little jump, little, I'll hop up, jump over, and then I'm going to go on my way. This one is like giant break in the graph. That's why it is a non-removable. Okay, so the next time I make you guys a pretty little video, it's going to be all about slant asymptotes. And some of you actually encountered what rational functions with slant asymptotes look like when you figured out that problem about the um, font, or not the font, the writing on a particular page that has 30 square inches of writing on it. So anyhow, that will be the next thing that we're going to do, but I look forward to seeing what you guys come up with in the problems I give you.